man, Davian no more. Cut, man, Mr. Omar ain't cut, you know. Omar ain't gonna cut, you know, professional Omar, man. Grinder Omar in the cut, man. How, why I been away for so long, bro? This is the truth. I got banned, bro. I call Squeaker. I call some Squeakers from Track Stars, bro. You know how that go down. They're very, they're very aggravating. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, I try to, I try to get out of the series. You know, a little fan, a little friendly family series, bro. It just didn't work out. You know, I don't fuck with nobody, and I'm definitely not talking to nobody else after that. When I get my account back, just strictly streams and grind. You know what I'm saying? I could have been in SS1 right now, but y'all know I don't play the game. I got a life, my nigga. I got a life, you know? But, uh, anyways, Mr. Omar in the cut, man. Mr. Omar in the cut. Man, grinding Omar in the cut, bro. Losing weight, Omar in the cut, bro. It's coming fast and clean, bro. Transformation video definitely coming, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely coming. But we got a banger here, bro. You can't, there's no denial this is a banger, bro. I actually kind of find this kind of weird because I ain't never seen nothing like this. But well, let's bump this up on the screen. Let's just have a little reaction. UK drill rappers and knife fights. Like, I guess it's caught on camera, you know, type shit. Well, we about to see what the vibe is, you know. Let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that comes to mind is the royal family, T and Crumpets, or Big Ben. But the UK drill scene has exposed the darker side of the kingdom that many don't get to see. A world full of stabbings, gang beef, kidnapping, and murder. Here's a look at some of the craziest knife fights that have involved UK drill rappers. Young Diz. Europe has much stricter gun laws than the US, and therefore, it's rare for rival gangs to shoot at one another in the UK. However, that doesn't stop the violence. Stabbings and knife crime are more common on the streets of London than they are in the U.S. Local gangs are responsible for thousands of stabbings per year, and police reported that between 2018 and 2019, there were 4,277 cases of knife crime. Damn. Authorities say that the popularity Look. of Drew... This is thing with people, though. You know what I'm saying? Damn, my face. Clear as fuck. But this is thing about people, though. Would you rather have knife stabbings or would you have rather have shootouts? Because look, here, where I'm from, I'm not saying exactly if you know where I'm from, you know where I'm from. It's more shootings than any knife, any, uh, than any knife fights will ever have. You know, I mean, I'm just keeping the buck with you. You know what I'm saying? Would you rather have this or would you rather have stabbings? Like me, I don't condone violence. Never would be a motivator of violence. But, yeah, let's just get into this. I don't got too much to say. Music is behind the wave of stabbings. So in 2019, they partnered with YouTube to ban the genre and have 130 drill music videos removed from the platform. One case in particular involving a rapper from East London named Young Diz caught their attention and prompted the crackdown on drill in the country. Isaac Donko, who raps under the name Young Diz, was arrested in April 2019 for a kidnapping that occurred the previous summer. Diz was accused of recruiting a group of high school kids, two that were 16 and two that were 14, to help him kidnap and torture another 16-year-old enemy. Isaac was a member of the Sixth Gang, which operated out of the Beckton neighborhood of East London. He's also a popular rapper who performed under the name Young Diz and had even been featured on Tim Westwood's popular YouTube channel. Diz is known as the Prince of the Six and is a feared and respected gang member in East London. He has been making music for years, and when Drill started to pop off in London, he caught the wave and began to build a career for himself. But his music career was put on hold for a while after he caught a pretty wild charge. Diz was 21 years old at the time and had recruited a group of teenagers from a local high school to help him with the kidnapping. It was later alleged in court that Diz would often go to the local high school and flaunt his wealth and status in the street to recruit younger kids in the neighborhood to help him commit crimes. He would front them money and drugs, then use that to manipulate them into doing whatever he wanted. Allegedly, the victim had stolen some product from Diz and refused to pay him back or listen to his demands, so the rapper decided to make an example out of him. In August 2018, Diz and his crew spotted the victim on Gordon Road in London and forced him into a dark blue Ford. The victim later testified in court that he was sure they were going to kill him. Instead, they ended up torturing the victim by beating him, 
stabbing him Damn. with scissors, burning him with boiling water, and forcing him to swallow cannabis. They then found him to call the his fuck? family and demand a ransom of 1,500 pounds, which is around 1,900 US dollars, and eventually let him go. However, they filmed the whole thing with an iPhone camera, which was later used as evidence. Diz was eventually arrested and sentenced to over six years for kidnapping and torture. Although it was not the only crime that led to the UK's war on drill music, it definitely contributed, and the official crackdown on the genre on YouTube came just a month after this incident. Many have criticized the police and tech company for their decision to crack down on the genre, this shit crazy. claiming that it's a violation of freedom of speech and creative expression. But police... Be real, my nigga. You would never think the UK is like this. I ain't never look at the UK like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way how they describe them is... Like, these niggas is dangerous or something. And these niggas is, you know, they crazy. And that drill music glorifies violence and gang culture and has led to an increase in stabbings in London. However, the ban on drill has only added to the genre's popularity and the violence hasn't exactly calmed down. If you thought that was crazy, these next rappers started a machete fight in public. Yup, here's what went down. The new pepperoni pizza meatball sub. Only at Firehouse Subs. Don't eat that shit. It'll kill you. Dig a D and Savo. On January 2nd, Savo, that ain't sound familiar. A fight broke out outside of the Westbourne Park tube station on Harrow Road in London between two rival gangs. According to news outlets, the fight was pre planned and was a clash between two rival gangs the Lad Grove Gang and the Mozart Gang. There were seven men in total wielding knives and machetes. Two innocent women ended up getting hurt in the fight, and all seven men were arrested and sentenced to prison time, including two famous drill rappers. Three of the men arrested were a part of a music crew and gang called 1011, who operate out of the Ladbroke Grove neighborhood and are also known as the Ladbroke Grove Gang. The other four were members of another rival street gang and music crew called the Harrow Road Boys, who are also known as the Mozart Gang because they operate out of Mozart Estates. There are two opposing sets who are also part of the local drill scene. The three Ladbroke Grove gang members who were part of the brawl were 18-year-old Jordan Badeau, 19-year-old Rice Herbert, and an unnamed 17-year-old associate. Badeau and Herbert are well-known drill rappers who make music under the names Savo and Digga D. Digga D and his crew, 1011, are credited with being one of the first drill groups in London. They formed the group in 2015 and have had several clashes with the police while they've been active. In 2017, the group was arrested for carrying machetes and baseball bats, which they claim were for a music video. But police weren't buying it and claimed the group was planning an ambush of a rival gang. 1011 was hit with the criminal behavior order, which meant that all of their prior videos were taken off the internet and the crew had to seek permission from the police before uploading any more music. By that point, the songs had already racked up millions of plays, and their fans quickly started uploading the music to their own channel to continue to move. Stop. Also present in the brawl were four shit, members bro. of the Merrill Road Boys slash Mozart gang. None of them were famous rappers. However, there are drill rappers in the group, like Ratlin and Fredo, but none were present in this particular fight. The entire brawl was captured by CCTV, and all seven men were quickly arrested after the incident. The leader of the Mozart gang, Damani Charles, was stabbed in the brawl and was treated at the scene, then arrested. The 17-year-old associate of the Ladbroke Grove gang was also stabbed but managed to escape. He later showed up at a hospital and claimed he had been injured from falling off a bike. The rest of the crew involved in the brawl were later arrested in their homes. Because the fight was caught on tape, they didn't have much of a defense and nearly all of them pled guilty to violent disorder and possession of a deadly weapon. They were all sentenced to between two and three years for the crime, except the 17-year-old who was detained for 10 months. If you thought that was crazy, this next rapper was arrested after attacking a moving vehicle with a huge zombie knife. Joshua Gardner is a drill rapper and a member of the G-Lane gang, or CR7 crew, that operates out of Croydon. That motherfucking window is not breaking, bitch. He's in it. Ah, that bitch is not breaking. The vehicle with a huge zombie knife on the streets of London. The incident happened back in 2018 and was captured on a dash cam. The video that was later played in court shows Joshua on the bike approaching a blue Volkswagen parked on the side of the street. The vehicle clearly recognizes Joshua as he pulls up and tries to pull out and speed away. However, traffic prevents the car from escaping and Joshua gets off his bike and begins attacking the vehicle. First, he kicks the door and then he starts swinging around a huge zombie knife and uses it to batter the windows and door of the vehicle. 
He tries to rip open the door, but it's locked, and the driver manages to get out and escape on foot. Joshua was arrested and charged with attempting to cause grievous bodily harm. The gang unit in the local police department was already familiar with Joshua due to some of his past activities and his involvement with the G-Lane gang. Not much is known about G-Lane. They have a bunch of assorted videos out by different members on YouTube, including a video for the song No Hook by Grinner and YL, where Joshua can be seen standing in the background. According to the UK newspaper, The Sun, the gang was also known by the postcode CR7 and had been involved in a gang war that led to multiple stabbings and murders, including the death of a 15-year-old. Joshua, who was only 18 at the time of his arrest, had been charged once before for attempting to rob a school kid of his cell phone and wallet. To the shock of many paying attention to the case, the rapper was let off with just 150 hours of community service and no jail time for the road rage incident. The judge who presided over the case claims that a kidnapping that had occurred not long before the case was the reason behind why she let him off with just a warning. Apparently, on March 26, 2018, Joshua was kidnapped by another gang of men in their 20s over a drug debt that his friend owed. Damn. He was held at gunpoint and forced to sell drugs for them for 10 days until the debt was paid off. She claimed that although the kidnapping was no excuse for violent behavior, it did explain why he was acting in such a reckless and vicious manner. Many local court and residents who were following the case were shocked by this verdict and claimed that it was only going to lead to more knife crime in the city. However, Joshua didn't make contact with the victim. He merely caused a frenzy and terrorized the public. The court was not able to bring any evidence of Joshua's gang ties other than his presence in music videos, and therefore, it may have been tough to make the jail time stick. However, that didn't stop the public from going into a frenzy, claiming that the jail time was too lenient and that it sets a bad example for other kids roaming the streets with knives and machetes. But if you thought that was crazy, this next rapper stabbed a man in the heart outside a fast food restaurant then rapped about it in a song where he mocks him for his meal choice. You don't want to miss this crazy story. Lil M. Dot. Lil M. Dot is a rapper associated with the South London gang and rap crew called 814, a split-off group of a larger gang called the Ghetto Boys that operates in the New Cross, Lewisham, and Deptford area of South London. 814 has gained prominence in the UK drill scene, and Lil M. Dot was one of their most prominent members. But M.Dot's career would be cut short after he was found guilty of causing bodily harm to a victim he stabbed in March 2020. The stabbing occurred outside of After Hours, a fast food restaurant in New Cross, South London. 814 is known to have beef with another local gang called Monson Bloodset. The man that M.Dot attacked was a man named Ahmad Torfi, who was alleged to be a member of the rival gang. However, according to the defense attorneys, Ahmad was not an active gang member, but simply friends with a few members of the crew and was actually a shy mild-mannered man who worked as a steward at local sporting events. He was out that night getting food with his twin brother and girlfriend when M.Dot caught him off guard and stabbed him multiple times in the chest. He had to undergo open heart surgery because of the attack and is now permanently paralyzed. And to make matters worse, M.Dot released a freestyle to YouTube where he brags about the stabbing. He even goes as far as to diss his victim for his meal choice, rapping, all he wanted was some mac and cheese. It's pretty cold blooded to nearly stab someone to death. Why don't niggas? Why all these niggas sound the same? Oh, he went to make cheese. They make fun of their taste in food, but in the world of drill rap, anything goes. M Dot was arrested not long after releasing his freestyle and sentenced to 14 years in prison for the crime. Damn, Amazon only 14, tech, nigga? Now permanently These niggas getting let off. You do that here, nigga? You get sentenced 20 years plus, nigga. Say I'm lying, bro. I want y'all to correct me, bro. Am I tweaking or am I right? Come on, bro. Niggas that live in the U.S., just in the U.S. in general, don't matter where you at. You get 20 plus years. You ain't getting no 14 years here, nigga. What the fuck? Sound crazy. Although no one deserves to be stabbed in the chest while out grabbing a meal, there is a disagreement online as to how involved the mod was in the Monson Blood Set gang. Several media outlets allege that the crime was a case of mistaken identity. However, this clearly isn't the case. Ahmad, who also went by the name Ace, was at least affiliated with the Monsons, as seen in this picture drill fans uncovered on social media. Others have claimed that Ahmad was active on social media and had gotten into beef with rival gang members online in the past. Also, 
Lil M Doc claims in court that Ahmad and his brother rushed him when they saw him outside the restaurant and was simply acting in self-defense. Whether Ahmad is entirely innocent or not doesn't really matter because Lil M Doc still committed the crime and then proved his guilt by rapping about it. But hopefully, this will be a lesson to others that even just hanging with the wrong people or making threats online can get you caught up in serious beef. No cap. If you like this video, check out some of our previous videos. All right, man. Omar out the clip. And I, I know y'all haven't seen my face in a while, bro. This is going to go up today, bro, because y'all ain't seen my face in a while, bro. I haven't been posting that much. I swear to God, I'm back on my grind, bro. I just had to get a, a couple days, you know, getting my mental shit together, you know. It's not nothing personal. It's just that everybody go through something. Just just think about it like that. It ain't nothing serious or nothing. Just that every single day, it's not, you know, you know, you got to do something. You know, you either got to do this, you got to do that. I do other shit besides YouTube. It's not like I just sit here all day on my ass and I do nothing. I got a whole job. You know, I stream. I do, I work out. I do a bunch of shit. So, yeah, I love y'all niggas, bro. Forever love y'all niggas, bro. We out. What's up?